it appears that all the self-realization and all the benefits that come from meditation come from silencing the mind. Is that correct? Yeah. Yes. First step, and that is the beginning and the end. The moment it effortlessly becomes totally silent, so its attention turns to itself. It has to be attentive all the time. So you keep it engaged in the world, so it becomes miserable because it tries to be attentive on impermanent things, becomes attached, then analyzes, decides this is good, decides this is bad, it decides that this is happiness, it decides this is unhappiness. Like that it gets involved on and on and on, never-ending process. But when it becomes silent, its attention turns to itself, because that entity is eternal, permanent. And also that entity is totally at peace contented. When there is total peace, there is automatically contentment is there. Vice versa, if there is contentment, automatically there is peace. So then it doesn't need anything, that's why it has peace. So that is the thing, silencing the mind. So Baba, we do that with this meditation, Jangama Dhyan, by focusing our attention between the eyebrows. And you said that if we, thoughts come, just keep watching, which means not thinking, and eventually the thoughts recede. So, Attention, what is attention? It seems like it's our awareness. And if we let that awareness go to the thoughts, then it's like we energize those thoughts. Each of those thoughts seems to have its own charge. It could be an emotion, a memory, whatever. But if we keep watching, eventually the thoughts go away. But if we let our attention go to the thoughts, it's like it recharges them and they just keep spinning. What is the, what's the attention and how does it put life into the, the mind? Uh, in my opinion, simply paying an attention itself doesn't create any such problems. So when you pay attention, the next step, it recognizes. So it must not recognize the existence of a thought, of a vision, of any object, of any subject, nothing. So thus it is able to watch. Attention is a common word. You have to pay attention to just watch. Like that, be mindful type. That's what I mean at least when I use the word attention. So attention doesn't mean that you have to start talking with yourself or try to analyze or make any judgments. Whatever you want to make, you be attentive to that. Here, you have to watch. So you be attentive that you just watch. Take care that you just watch. Okay, so what you're saying then is the attention. Well, first, I think of Baba, the attention as being my awareness. But wherever I put my attention, which is my awareness, then I become conscious of what I'm, you, I'm talking to you or what I, what's in my mind. But No, you then, becoming aware is different. Becoming conscious is different. When you become aware, you simply become aware that existence, but you don't bother anything about that existence. But if you become conscious of that existence, then you are getting involved 
into that. Right. Yeah, because when the, the awareness is there, it, there's not really an I uh, involved. It's just kind of just aware yes. of its own existence. But then yeah. if you're conscious, it's I am conscious. It's knowingness. It's like knowingness. Yes. I know something. There has to be a knower and it has to know something, an object. Uh, so originally, though, that awareness is pure and then it falls on something and it becomes conscious. And then it starts to analyze and make judgments. But, but I think what you're saying is it's not the thought that's the problem. The problem is that when the awareness goes to the thought and becomes conscious of it, it starts to get involved in it. Instead, it can't just keep watching. Yeah. So becoming conscious is means you become conscious that there is a thought and that it is a good or it is a bad like that, it uh, jumps into further, further, thought after thought starts coming. But if you are simply aware, you are aware that existence, but you don't try to analyze what it is. Right, so we could say then the attention in its purest form is just awareness. Awareness. Then the thought disappears because you are not right. going to hold on to that. Okay, you've said that uh, you know, as we progress in meditation, you realize that it's consciousness watching consciousness or consciousness watching itself. Yeah, here, yes. Consciousness here is not thinking or analyzing or not recognizing. It is simply watching itself. Because it normally... Um, are we're conscious of the world and all the thoughts and everything that's going on in our mind uh but we're not conscious of being conscious of the consciousness itself yes true and so as the mind becomes more quiet and the thoughts recede then we become aware or conscious uh, that we are the consciousness and um that's like one of the first steps, really. So, and so. after that, no further thoughts come. Okay, this is it. You become quiet, just aware of the consciousness, just awareness happens, and then that also stops. So that awareness is prior to consciousness, Baba? Yes. Because it, it seems that consciousness came with birth of the body. I have no, no knowledge of what was prior to being conscious that I existed. And uh, so this in consciousness of existence, is that, is that a permanent thing? Or, or um, is no. that... Oh, this... Oh. Consciousness of existence is there because you are stuck with the brain's reflections. So thus, you are, have become temporarily a dweller as if you are the dweller in this body. This body is the area in which you are, appear to be a dweller. So consciousness, is it the basic material of creation? I mean, ultimately, the the very first element of yeah, raw element. material, what you call it, in other words. So, in one of the Upanishads, like Kathopanishad, it says, where in this sentence, it says symbolically, words have been used. When the divine wanted to create nothing else existed except the divine. So the divine took out from itself, itself as the raw material and created the world. Thus, this world is to be considered a form of that divinity. Like that it says. So, but here, the, all the terminologies are simply imagination to give a nearest clue. The divinity is not as a personality, it is as the 
supreme consciousness all pervaded so just like your mind is the best clue your mind is in a formless state <clears throat> it is neither a form nor formless beyond that but when the mind imagines it creates within itself so that means mind itself must be the raw material for any such creation of a thought or a vision that is in the mind so that's the the mind then being that creative imagination yeah. so power that is of that consciousness clue. taking this as a clue the teaching say the divine has all pervaded in this universe because every appearance is within that divinity within that supreme consciousness including our own body so here so imagine the amazing thing you are in a dream but suddenly one person starts thinking there is something something wrong what is this appearance and then eventually realizes that i am not this dream i am the one who is dreaming temporarily so i have to stop this dreaming then i will have peace so baba consciousness is both the dreamer and and the knower of the dream yeah simultaneously and since consciousness is the prime material of all manifestation all thought you were saying i guess it becomes thought and thought becomes matter uh then is that why as we quiet the mind and become silent we start to feel like we're everywhere in everything because we yeah. are <laughs> yes it's a uh, in uh, in astronomical words the same thing what you said if we have to say suddenly we realize we are not this body we are this space and we start seeing space as ourselves everywhere in everything as everything finally the dweller <laughs> what do you said so is consciousness the seed of of all creation would you, could you say that yes and what's the seed of consciousness when it imagines creates it becomes creative but consciousness is risen from the absolute is is that correct? correct yes absolute simply you have to use some terminology to go further further whereas it is the same that's it either you can stop there or you want to use another terminology there's one more father is there like that <laughs> like the the mirror in front of the, like the mirror in front of the mirror it goes Fine. forever in terms is this mirror is the appearance of this mirror is the reason for the other mirror that mirror's appearance is the reason for this mirror like that it goes on and on and on and never ending so you just remove one of the mirrors and everything ends so what are we prior to consciousness baba existence eternal existence so that's prior to the mirror yeah when we use the word existence so that means existence is in other words eternal you know baba some teachers say that we can't empty our mind of thoughts yet this is what we're uh, attempting to do with meditation can could you address that in my personal experience and opinion it is possible to quieten the mind to empty it by emptying it doesn't become simply empty it is going to be absolute all the time whether there is something in it or not 
like the space is going to be absolute whether this universe is there in it or not in it perhaps baba they mean that you can't find a door where you can just use thought to get rid of thoughts you have to watch and just stop thinking you see they one has to understand technology because no other object matter subject anything can remove the thoughts except the consciousness itself because consciousness is the thing which has imagined created all the thoughts only it can withdraw it has to become quiet and the thoughts are withdrawn it they all disappear dissolve how can we abide in that awareness all the time both in meditation and out of meditation by practice by practice slowly you would be able to delink our body movements and our minds reverberation the mind can be skillfully quieten and the body keeps moving it is quiet this is moving it's quiet like body moving means in it all the sensory organs everything comes slowly you develop the skill that you talk but you are silent you smell but you are silent because in the long time of tapas you have practiced not to analyze so thus you smell something but you don't analyze what it is whether it is a smell or what it is also you don't name it simply it is there like you talk but you don't analyze what you are talking the such thoughts of ego doesn't occur oh great knowledge is coming out of me what i am talking is so beautiful nothing no awareness is there what i am talking as a separation afterwards sometimes if i try to listen how wonder this is what is the source this source must be that absolute only so because the i has disappeared dissolved there it never thinks ki i have done this it cannot the source is the absolute so bob as you're talking to us then there's no sense of you really talking to us it's just uh, we ask you a question and these answers come out with no sense of you doing anything yes <laughs> during this discussion this question came up what is the role of desire in all this because when you said consciousness is creating that creation itself is a desire isn't it and i was also reading this uh, ashtavakra gita and this shloka came up the mind of the man seeking liberation can find no resting place within but the mind of the liberated man is always free from desire by the very fact of being without a resting place originally a creation happen without any desire just by a practice like a small clue when in the early morning you get up if you have had a sound sleep your mind would be fresh and quiet you enjoy that quietness you are in yourself for a while suddenly unknown to you your mind starts imagining when it starts imagining it has no desire simply because of the presence of energy and the ability of the consciousness this thing happened just like that some school of thoughts tell that nothing really got created and some tell ki without any desire the thought came so both are equally correct there was no desire because the consciousness was in itself when it was in itself it was totally contented and because of contentment it was totally peaceful when it was peaceful no other desire arises 
you don't need anything else you need anything else only when you don't have peace if you analyze if you think if you try to churn this is the fact actually so when you have peace so thus a desire couldn't have arisen as a desire simply it started cricketing so that is also the concept we tell in hinduism enormous amount of consciousness arose and created but that simply created just for sake of play without any desire of needing anything because it was already at peace and contentment so that is what is explained as the concept of brahma vishnu and shiva these three always recognized as divinity the trinity is trimurtis the first adi murti is first manifested form of the divine para brahman so after this if you look into the puranas and the stories of devatas indra mahendra all these things rakshasas they all had become little bit corrupted means because of insecurity so desire started arising perhaps of our power for security because they had started forgetting about themselves thus the self started forgetting themselves and the next generation next generation like it went on becoming corrupted and the next incarnation went on happening whereas for brahma vishnu and shiva no next incarnation has happened they remained in the self at the end of the kalpa they become one with the divinity para brahmam actually the truth is that is the one so that is so, how a desire has happened without a desire so that's why they tell us not to have desires yes desire if you can get rid of all desire you will find the peace within because you are having a desire to find that peace you want to enjoy generally people understand the word enjoy instead of peace they don't know that the peace is the thing which gives enjoyment but they want enjoyment and they go on looking for things they develop desires to feel satisfied so the, the other example you gave about the mind and the body moving reminded me of that metaphor where they say when you're sitting in a train and the train next to yours is moving you feel like you are also moving so yes and our stillness and know that nothing is moving it's just an illusion that i am yes moving. very true when the mind is quiet you realize yourself that you are simply still you are not doing anything and you never did anything at all if the consciousness starts spinning it appears as if you are moving and you are doing you have come into existence as a personality when this all goes that's why i told a while ago to agastya when when i am answering no such thought comes that i am answering and you have asked a question and i have that knowledge there is no such thing that individuality is not there at all yeah now baba ji i have a very quick question about this conscious and body i was thinking about it this morning this in canada when you're not well they say mayu sharila meaning the body is not well we don't really say i'm not well we say that. so i'm thinking baba ji now for us you're divine so you when you undergo pain or when the body undergoes pain or pleasure or whatever it is how do you to disassociate the two I know in birth one quite unwell but yet you did all the programs without it affecting you how do you manage that baba ji i tried and i failed miserably naturally and effortlessly the ego has disappeared because the truth has been known that i do not exist at all whatever exists is that absolute so whatever i was thinking about that i exist and i am this and i am that they were all simply illusions simply my own imagination 
through tapas and the practice of samadhi when this awareness comes once for all it remains there in that awareness so it never gets involved ever again the pain can so, be Babaji, there do you but not see? pain will be there if the body experiences because i have told a little bit of consciousness is in touch with the brain that experiences that pain but it doesn't get troubled these two things instantly happens in the world when you experience a pain of any sort you feel troubled if you had yes. if you are not troubled you wouldn't have bothered about the pain also for anybody this is the logic two are together actually whoever gets the pain they get troubled only when you become aware of your real self you are not troubled anymore you know just like somebody criticizes this body thinking this to be me i might become aware that they are criticizing but i am not troubled my consciousness is quiet at peace okay. because the truth is known thank you so much baba ji thank you you talk a lot about supreme consciousness of existence but not so much lately about supreme energy and i and you've also said as a recall past that supreme consciousness and supreme energy are really one and the same they they're not two separate so my question is is it is the explanation for the appearance of a creation because supreme energy by its nature wants to be active and so the appearance of the world is there without any desires being the cause because the nature of energy is to be active otherwise what good is energy if it if it is an active energy is about movement it's about yeah so if you yeah. it's talk- true same thing if i talk about consciousness or if i talk about energy it is the same they both are same only if one is active the other also becomes active and consciousness becomes active only because of the presence of the energy just like i tell your mind thinks and spins because of the presence of energy it is possible for the mind to think otherwise it would have become inert so that is why it is always explained they both are inseparable shiva and shakti they are one and same uh, my my question is if we could disconnect from this uh-huh. ownership of the desires will we get closer to being able to desire without being the desire with desire in a more conscious in a in with more consciousness you see uh, let me try to explain see if you can understand okay. uh, sometimes in my teachings i have told try to explain having a desire itself is not a problem so if the desire gets fulfilled or if it doesn't gets fulfilled so then you put your happiness to depend on that desire getting fulfilled or not getting fulfilled then you are likely to go into troublesome periods that is what is alerted in spiritual teaching you have a desire of the body or of the house of this world anything but be ready to understand be aware that all these are impermanent any time anybody can snatch if that happens you must be ready if you are not ready you will be troubled like this body one day this is like a rental house the owner will take it away one day so we have to be simply ready with that awareness so then that desire is not a problem that means 
that desire will not involve your consciousness getting into any problem so that way only a teaching is given to be aware of desires if you can get rid of desires means if you can experience the total contentment in yourself your existence then at all times you are contented and you are at peace the rest you can be a normal person in this world you can own a house and you can have a body you can have any property you can have anything in the world but you will always be at peace whether you have it or you don't have it that's what you would be able to achieve by practicing meditation okay so is that how ajiva mukti approaches life exactly that is what is known as jivan mukti whether you have you are happy whether you don't have you are happy because your happiness will not depend on any of the world's objects including your own physical body but you can have everything it is not prohibited okay. so this is the way that we live fully in the world and still yeah still, if everybody can yeah. become aware okay. everybody can be happy at all times okay okay bless you uh, some people books mention that a person can practice meditation for years even achieve some type of samadhi but if their desires and passions are not overcome they can still fall back into creation sometimes even fall deeper into creation however uh, you mentioned in jangama dhyana if we just watch our thoughts basically the thoughts are our desires if we just watch our thoughts without getting involved in the thoughts we can eventually overcome our desires and passions can you please elaborate on that yeah you see like i told uh, for the previous question having a desire itself is not problem but if the desire grows into an anxiousness further whether it will happen or not if it is unfulfilled i am unhappy so all this is what is the troublesome so when you are just watching the thoughts you are not developing any desires towards that thought if it is there okay if it is not there also okay that with that attitude you proceed if you have a house is good and if you have a body that is good if at any time if the body comes to an end it's okay good because you will not depend for your happiness for any of the happenings in the world if it happens it's good you want to have it you have it nobody will prohibit spirituality does not prohibit but simply you don't depend for your happiness on that impermanent item because that cannot be guaranteed that's what the teaching is but when you go on watching you are actually practicing not to get involved with the thoughts you won't identify yourself or your happiness with the thoughts you simply start becoming quiet and remaining at peace thus eventually those thoughts and visions disappear in the mind so you can still have some ambition you want to achieve something in this world you want to help somebody but your happiness will not depend on that like for example we are also working we want to create awareness of the truth what we experienced we want to initiate people into meditation we want people to learn meditation but my happiness will not depend on the results of what i am going to do whether i will achieve that i can train 50 self realized people my happiness is depend not dependent on that i will simply go on teaching what i know i will create an awareness then whoever develop faith whoever is destined they will listen to me and they will not only listen they will be able to understand my teachings then practice understand the need and they will achieve so like that so you do whatever you want to do but remain at peace thank you baba ji
Um, yeah, my question is uh, this uh, meditation that we are doing with our eyes closed and watching the mind, is it possible to do when your eyes open during the regular activities of the day? Let's say if you're washing dishes, if you're doing laundry or doing some chores or just sitting idle, just not doing anything or just watching something, can you still watch your thoughts in your eyes open or is it difficult? If you can keep quiet mentally, then you will be able to watch while keeping the eyes open. Otherwise, initially, until you become an expert, it is recommended to keep the eyes closed and then try when you have opened the eyes also. Because when you have opened the eyes, an additional illusion is there, this world's manifestation. When you close the eyes, also there is an illusion there. <coughs> so you will have to face the double illusions. So you have to practice more strongly. You go on washing the clothes, but just wash the clothes and don't bother for anything else. Whether the clothes will get washed or not washed, you don't bother. You just wash the clothes. Just like the old um, filmy dialogue, you, when you want to shoot, just shoot. Don't keep talking, you want to shoot. Like that, if you can adopt in every action of yours, you mentally you can become quiet eventually. That can serve like a sadhana for you. That is the karma yoga. So kind of being in the present moment instead of thinking about present the past moment. or the future. Yes, in the present okay. moment. Okay. Never be anxious. You plan for your future, but don't have to be anxious. Right. The other thing I was thinking about is with the self-realization is a moment where the ego actually gets dilution because it's an imaginary thing, the ego. It's never a real thing. It's just some memories or some thought process, right? But how does it just dissolve or how does it die? Is it some divine thing that like the self-reality appears and then it just get dissolved like that or it? how does it happen? happen actually? It is already is it like there. It is already there. Mind is simply into imaginations. That's why it has forgotten about itself. It has to become quiet mentally. The moment it becomes quiet, everything is dissolved automatically. It has peace and the awareness also comes. There was one question in the chat that uh, they wanted me uh, to read. Um, it says, Baba, during meditation today, you said don't recognize or don't even talk in your mind. But when a thought or vision comes, I, I, when a thought or vision came, I remembered what you said and I kept telling myself, don't recognize it. How, it, how to not recognize and analyze is the question. Is it okay to say don't recognize in these beginning stages? Being quiet and just watching does not seem to happen. Will it come eventually? Is he always... An action has to happen into what you are supposed to do. Just like you stand on the banks of a river, I have to jump, I have to jump, let me jump. How do I jump? You just jump. Stop these three things. I have to jump. And how do I jump? And when do I jump? Stop these three things and just jump. So like that here, the technology is, you don't have to keep asking yourself, I should not recognize, I should not analyze. Don't think like that. Just watch. If you are watching, then you are not analyzing, then you are not thinking. So use the eyeballs to steadily watch the front portion. When you are watching, when the thoughts come, don't think anything about that thought. Just like you are watching me talking now, do not allow your mind to think, Oh, Babaji is very old, he has white hair. Oh, Babaji's head is bald. Why do you have to think? Just listen to me what I am telling. Isn't it possible? Like that, when you are meditate also, it is possible that you just watch the thoughts. You don't think about the thought whether it has a white hair or a bald head or whatever it is, or a red pullover, don't bother, just watch. It is possible, you can do that one. Try. 